Delighted to have with me this afternoon Katerina van Delden, an old friend and CEO of an organization called Inosabi, of which she was also a founder. Uh, and basically, Inosabi has grown from a startup to being a very successful player in the innovation space, particularly working in the field of agile innovation. So I was fascinated to see when she uh, recently published a book with some colleagues on agile innovation called connect the dots and a very appropriate title and I thought I have to try and talk with her a little about what's inside. So Katerina, thank you so much for coming and welcome. Uh, perhaps I could start with a fairly basic question, why write a book? <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me and uh, giving me the opportunity to chat about one of my favorite topics, you know, about uh, what we've written about in the book. And um, you're right, you know, if you run a software company, it's kind of, it's not the first obvious idea to write a book. <laughs> but honestly, I feel that, that in our digital world, you know, that makes it especially um, interesting to have a tangible object, you know, that also looks pretty and it's on your desk. But our goal in writing it um, was really to kind of reflect on the experiences, on the learnings um, from the last couple of years, because we've seen that so many um, so many factors in innovation management really have changed. And, you know, when we started the company 10 years ago, um, the talk was mainly about, let's say, user integration, about customer co-creation. And now it's so much more, it's so much bigger. We talk about data um, in innovation processes. We talk about ecosystems. We talk about connections. We talk about digital digitalization in, in, as a general business um, kind of environment. And so I feel that um, today's business strategies as such are really, in, it's digital and it's innovation. And it, it's such a core um, of modern business strategies that really said, okay, now it's the time to reflect on what has changed in the couple of years and to um, put it in a form that sparks conversations because that's what we really want to do as an organization. You know, we um, we want to be, we want to be build our own innovation ecosystem. We want to um, really be an active part and active sparing partner and spark conversations. So the book is actually, um, one thing that does that, and I mean, best proof is that we're talking today. Absolutely, it's great. <laughs> um, you, you're right, we hear a lot these days about this word agile, it sort of creeps yeah. into so much of the discourse. Um, sometimes it does so, to sort of suggest, uh, along with so much of the innovation uh, talking, um, it's just about doing things faster, it's pressing the accelerator pedal right to the floor. Um, perhaps you could elaborate a little on why it's not and what it is. Why mm -hmm. is agile mm -hmm. so important? Yes. Um, actually, even though we, we say we talk about agile innovations and it's even part of the title, you know, I honestly, I'm a bit tired of, of the word. I think that happens with all the words that become buzzwords in, in our business talk, you know, and kind of start to um, be used in, in so many different ways and kind of just to, uh, but often prohibit to think about what it actually means. So what I really like is to go back to where the word comes from, you know, and it's really from the Agile Manifesto that was written by um, people from the software world to kind of explain how um, new ways of, you know, project planning in that case um, could be done to reach uh, not only more speed, but also to be closer to customer needs, to, um, to foster also culture of innovation amongst teams and to have very successful collaboration. So it's really true on so many different levels. And what I feel is that um, if we take it from there, we see that it's really about abandoning process-heavy activity-oriented planning and replacing it with like frequent re-elevation, adjustment of plans, quick reactions to, to changes and to make work visible, to give team responsibility, um, so it's really, it's a kind of a very holistic approach that just the one buzzword agile really doesn't, uh, doesn't catch. But uh, if you dig it a bit deeper into the methodology, you kind of see how powerful it is and that it's uh, worth enduring that it's a buzzword. <laughs> That's great. But um, as you know, I, I'm fascinated by innovation management. And mm -hmm. I'm afraid one of the sentences in your book really caught my eye because you said um, agile is the next evolutionary step in innovation mm -hmm. management. So I've got this picture of that, the old Charles Darwin picture of the apes and so on, <laughs> gradually getting upright and then walking and doing stuff. Mm -hmm. So, yes, there's an evolutionary thing. But could you explain that a little more? And why has it taken us so long to get to standing up, homo erectus? 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I like that picture. <laughs> it's really, <laughs> and it's it's actually uh, describing quite well what I experience as well. Because in the last, well, I've been in you know in this context of innovation management only for the last ten years, not as you you know you've seen quite a lot more in in terms of the development. But um, what I've seen is that historically we come innovation management has been very much in the corner of a creative only process. Let's say so you would probably have a workshop and I don't know dance your ideas and which is great <laughs> um, and then came all the um, uh, kind of focus on customer integration on lead users on design thinking um, really to to take on the perspective of you know needs first what kind of problem am, am I solving uh, who am I developing for um, but it was still in all this realization, for me, it was a rather isolated process that didn't have so much to do with the rest of the organization um, um, teams. And at the same time, it was a very manual process. You know, you had workshops, you put posted. The posted is kind of, you know, the, the symbol of this innovation process, you know. And um, you put posters on the wall, uh, wall, uh, wall, and then maybe you had some PowerPoints afterwards. And what has changed as a general setting is just that um, digital has become such an important success factor in today's business world and really has been diving business strategies um, and allowing us to connect, to reach out, to look for data. And this is, I think, what has happened, um, what has driven the development and innovation management towards agile innovation. Um, this possibility to reach out in your whole ecosystem to, we, we say, obviously, the brightest minds with the best ideas you know to actually find them could be that they are part of you know that they're a startup you've been working with or they are a supplier or a customer or even an employee that you were not aware of before that had these ideas and to be able to connect them in a completely new different way and to integrate them into the conversation um, and at the same time fuel that with data that might not have been visible before you know did our company maybe file a patent did somebody a um, couple of years ago in the continuous improvement process worked on that topic maybe there's somebody in a completely different country who is an expert on it who I could connect with and to combine this you know to really have on the one hand collab digital collaboration and on the other hand to find relevant data I think this has only become possible due to digitalization and um, to answer your um, to answer your question more quickly, um, this is for me the number one um, change that has happened um, that enabled us to look at innovation processes in this way now. That's fascinating. And um, one of the other things I wanted to probe with you a little, the I'll put the book up again, but the other part of the title is uh, it's agile innovation and collaborative ecosystems. Now that is another word we hear a lot about ecosystems. Mm -hmm. But you place a lot of emphasis on bringing different players together and indeed not just inside organizations. So I wonder if you could comment a little on the, the challenges of actually getting people together. After all, we, we've always heard we should get stakeholders to participate in innovation. Mm -hmm. but what are the challenges to actually making that happen and enabling mm -hmm. more effective innovation as a result? Yeah. Um, well, the underlying belief, and which I, which I, from the very bottom of my heart, believe to be true, is that innovation happens when you kind of cross different angles, different perspective, different experiences, um, and so that from existing experiences can spark something new. And um, this is why we talk about collaborating also with externals, with people who you didn't know before, into finding them. And um, the, if you talk about what has what's kind of the foundation to make it possible. It's a certain type of, well, one could say company culture, but I would prefer to say on a how we view humans and how we treat each other. Because um, you have to say goodbye to the thinking that only the person who has a certain job description is allowed to have a good idea. You know? And the others might not have the competence or might not you know, be eligible and not be worth listening to. But in order to really work in an ecosystem, every single one needs to acknowledge that other people can have good ideas, should be heard for it, um, should be respected for it, and should be taken into the conversation. And this is actually something that I, on a personal level, really appreciate and like, is that um, this approach, which becomes more and more dominant in, in our business world, really comes along with a completely new world um, view on how we respect each other as human beings. And this is what I really like. That's a, it's a lovely philosophy, and I, I also very much subscribe to it. Um, 
one of the places where we've actually seen, thankfully, these principles really playing out is in our response to this awful pandemic. Because mm-hmm. although it is a, an absolute tragedy, what it has also done is galvanise our approach to innovation in very different ways. So early on, we saw an incredible collaboration to come up with protective equipment and ventilators, and indeed the whole business of creating vaccines from a zero base so fast. This is all about collaborative innovation. Mm -hmm. And it's, for me, one of the, the lessons we might take. My fear is that when, hopefully, the pandemic's over, we might lapse back to innovation as usual. Um, I wonder if you could comment a bit about that, first of all, on whether you've seen Mm -hmm. real ecosystem collaboration in the crisis and how we might prevent ourselves slipping back when this is over. Yes, I 100% agree. I've I've seen a very similar um, movement and I I have... (laughs) <laughs> obviously from the background I'm coming from. So for example, the Munich Re with the Fraunhofer Institute had a challenge that they, was called Give a Breath Challenge and they asked for 3D printable designs for ventilators from all over the world and was a huge participation of different companies um, with um, knowledge in 3D printing, with student teams for ideas. So it was um, an incredible worldwide collaboration. And this is just one initiative of so many we've seen that um, really um, showcase collaboration and innovation. And um, I'm actually quite optimistic because I do believe that no company will go back go back to business as usual um, after this experience, just because they have experienced so many benefits, and also because um, employees have been have become used to um, the benefits of working from home, of using digital tools, and um, they might have and they have seen the success of innovation initiatives like these. So, you know, success stories are always the best driver for change. You know, if, if you've seen that's been successful during the pandemic, you will continue to do it, and. Um, on a different level, actually, I've, <laughs> if you want to change something in your life, um, it's said that your brain needs six weeks to adapt to it. So let's say you want to change your diet, you want to exercise more, you want to quit smoking. Basically, after six weeks, your neurons are adapted you know, to, to that change and it becomes the new normal. And well, with the pandemic and our collaborative behavior, we are way beyond six weeks. So <laughs> I have hope from that side as well that it sticks and that, that we're actually able to use this approach, approach to innovation to tackle all the other so important issues that we face today, like climate change, you know, like um, education throughout the world, like um, really equal chances for everybody. So I believe there's so many te- issues we, we, as a society, we, we um, can use these approaches to, um, to solve them. Yeah, yeah, I share that entirely. Um, I guess a question that goes right back to my beginnings in this innovation field, when I was first uh, working as an engineer, looking at how innovation happened, I was struck by how much inside a medium-sized company, the whole was less than the sum of the parts. We had all these smart people working in research and development and engineering and so on, all ostensibly trying to innovate together to create something. And in fact, they spend a lot of their time fighting each other, politics and so on. So the whole was less than the sum of the parts. Mm -hmm. Now, in a sense, the the manifesto in your book and everything you've said is all about it could be greater than the sum of the parts, Mm -hmm. these collaborative ecosystems. You've worked with large organizations, people like Siemens, and uh, that's for me, an interesting um, uh, playground to try these ideas out on because they are large organizations with all those internal tensions. How do you change a culture to be as collaborative as you're suggesting? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, obviously, um, you know, as a founder of the software company, you'll tend to say, well, just use my software and you'll be fine. (laughs) But no. (laughs) Um, Well, I believe if you... uh, it, it, a tool does help, that's obviously, but it uh, will never be um, really the, the core driver of change. Um, but it's really more, you know, company culture is really about the underlying beliefs and the values and that, that shape the behavior, you know. So um, in order to achieve that, the most important thing in, in my uh, point of view is to have um, a clearly communicated um, vision, a clearly, clearly communicated mission, and a leadership style that reflects the intended change. You know, if you 
um, want more collaboration, but we continue to have a leadership style that is extremely hierarchical, that is not humble. You know, I believe humble leadership, leadership is really um, one of the core drivers um, to enable collaboration. Um, that change will not happen, you know, if, if um, the leadership style doesn't reflect it. So with that in mind, of course, you need modern um, ways of communicating and and um, making your vision, mission, leadership style known. But without having it in place in the first way, it doesn't, um, it will not change. <laughs> yeah. Now, we first met when you were just starting out a company. Yeah. Here you are 10 years on with a very successful company much bigger than the startup. Um, I was very struck in the book, in the last section, how much you described this journey, your personal journey, mm -hmm. and how you've been trying to live the agile values, if we can call them that, um, mm -hmm. walking the talk. Uh, could you just comment a little on that, how in the building up of your own very successful business on innovation, agile has been important? Yes, it has always been, but to be honest, it has never been... Um, a conscious decision. It was more um, that, you know, we started off as students. Um, to be honest, we didn't have a penny. We didn't really know much. <laughs> we didn't know many people. We didn't have a product. So we uh, we really started off just with the idea. And I think this was about the time when we, when we met the first time. <laughs> and um, what we did is then, you know, we, we, we sought, um, sought conversations like people with you, uh, like you. Um, and and from these conversations, we started to learn and to iterate, and then we kind of started to trial, um, try out approaches. What what what's actually, what does stick? What's the need in the market? Um, what can we solve? What are what problem are we solving that um, actually companies are willing to pay for? And from that mentality, you know, from not knowing anything in the first place, and then um, through experimenting and conversations, um, learning and and pivoting our model really came a culture that we today call always in beta because it it never assumes that we actually know how things are done but that we constantly have to learn and to adapt and to kind of move together with our clients in order to achieve our goals and even now in ton, 10 years later and um, being part of a larger group of the Castello company group um, that still is true you know we, we kind of reinvent ourselves every couple of months and we go um, um, in order to um, to achieve our vision and to, to, to um, yeah, to be in that spirit always in beta. That's lovely. Um, Katrina, I'm very conscious that although, as always, it's fascinating to talk with you, I could talk for hours, you do have a company to run. So maybe I could just draw one last question. Um, if you uh, were pulling out two or three key headlines from the book that you uh, would encourage me to pass on to students, for example, what would mm -hmm. they be? Mm, well, two or three. Let's say, first of all, we've, we've been talking about um, many of these uh, points. So first of all, let's say really the rules of competition have changed in, in times of digital companies have to be quicker than ever before. And not only bringing up new, um, coming up with new ideas for products and services, but really bringing to the, them through the market. And once they are the market, iterating them, improving them, um, changing them. So it basically it's, it's kind of new rules of competition, I'd say. The second one is that you can answer um, as a company to these new environments by looking at the principles that make software companies successful, you know, learning from modern software development, from agile development, and asking yourself, what does that mean for my organization that might not be a software company? And lastly, um, as a third headline to say, um, in order to do so, establish an innovation ecosystem and um, enable collaboration between various stakeholders. Sounds a pretty good recipe. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. And there's some really interesting messages. I'd certainly encourage people to read the book in more detail. But for now, thanks so much for your time. Thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure talking to you.